captured Mir, but during the night, more than 2,000 Mexican Army personnel were surrounding them, and they were captured, and Santa Ana ordered they all be executed like he did at Goliad, the 300 Goliad. Well, that order was rescinded, fortunately, and um, they started moving in Mexico City. And uh, during that travel, they planned a big escape, so they took off. 178 of them were recaptured. And um, the uh, Santa Ana again said, okay, execute all of them. Well, uh, fortunately, that was rescinded by emissaries from different countries and, and um, said, okay, every tenth one be executed. So they put 17 black beans in a jar and, and the rest of them white drawer, white uh, beans. And they mixed them up and then pulled out the black beans. Each one of those of the black beans was executed. Well, Bigfoot Wallace and, and Ezekiel were spared. They got the white beans. Uh, two years later, Santa Ana released them and they came back to Seguin through New Orleans. On the 4th, 50 wagons of families showed up. All of them brought baskets of food. Oh, those farm wives could cook. We drank warm beer, we danced. They even had an orchestra, and I was surprised they could play in time. I never went back to Germany. to school, we were confirmed in the Lutheran Church, and we both loved sewing. And as we matured, we opened our very own seamstress business in downtown Berlin and had a thriving business. But I told him I would follow him when he was settled a little bit, and she said, after four years, I decided that was as settled as he was going to get. And I put passage on the visa out of Berlin, Germany on September 13, 1885, landed in Galveston on October 3, 1885, got married in Guadalupe County October 17, 1885, and went out to our, my new home a little bit north of Sydney. I was so dismayed when I saw what was there. Here I came from Berlin, opera houses, theaters, concert halls, museums, and what do I see? Barren country, hot. My greatest feat was I organized, organized the first black uh, school for the black children here in the city of Seguin. And it was supported by the Black Baptist Association. And so they, the Black Baptist Association purchased uh, land on Saunders Street, at, which is Saunders and Guadalupe, and at that site to this day, we know it as Lizzie and Berger School. Well, that school was built, and it was called the Abe Lincoln School, and it was named after the Great Emancipator. There were some problems. We had a lot of epidemics at that time. Yellow fever, scarlet fever, smallpox, things that don't happen anymore. But that, back at that time, we didn't have any vaccines or medicines or much doctors or anything to do anything about that. So that was a serious problem. All we could really do was kind of quarantine somebody, which meant lock them up till they either died or got better. There was an epidemic of smallpox in Houston and Galveston back at that time. I had the police meet the trains at the train depot. And if anybody on there was from Houston or Galveston, we wouldn't let them off the train. We made them go on to San Antonio. Along with the furniture store, my daughter Lala and her husband opened and operated a movie theater. You know it as the Palace Theater. They wanted to draw business to that corner with Daddy's Bank and Hubby's Furniture Store, so they put a movie theater there to bring in people. They enjoyed the movie, movie theater. My daughter Lala was an accomplished pianist. She played the organ, excuse me, for the silent movies.
I had been interested in women's suffrage. Women were not allowed to vote. I never understood that. I, and I gave many speeches about that. And finally, in 1919, Texas became the ninth state in the Union to ratify the 19th Amendment, and we could vote. And we were very excited about that. Many people had urged me to run for the legislature, and I was seriously considering it. I never got the chance. In February 1920, I contracted pneumonia. My husband took me to the hospital in San Antonio. He stayed with me night and day, but I died within a week. I had a large funeral in Sabine. The Texas flag was flown at half-mast over the state capitol, the first time that honor had ever been given to me. I was 56 years old. I died at the age of 86. I died at my house, my beautiful house that I cherish so much. My funeral lasted three days. I had two days of wake and on the third day I was I was buried. My house was open day and night. People came into my house day and night. As far west as California, as far north as Chicago and East New York. And believe it or not, they were all relatives. We, I had a big family and my family was very close and they all came to my funeral and it was said that Seguin had never seen such a big funeral as mine. It was awesome. <laughs> I was buried here in this historical cemetery and when I was buried here I was buried along with my family, friends, acquaintances, because everybody knew me. And I'm happy here. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah. And I am happy that I made a positive, significant contribution to the history of Seguin. Because this is where we grew as a family. And this is the town that I cherish. Thank you. Thank you.